Hello everyone, I'm Nick Daikyu coming to you from Vancouver, BC, Canada. I'm willing to showcase you some of the more interesting card choices, card strategies, and alternative lines that Salaman Great, an amazing anime deck, further supplemented by the Duelist Pack Soul Burning Volcano has to offer. In this video, you'll learn some future tech choices, some alternative lines, uh, some with one card starters and two with supplementary uh, anti-Nibiru strategies. I hope that you get to enjoy the in-depth look, uh, maybe learn a thing or two, or just to stimulate your brain on these amazing burning animals and all they've come to offer from the amazing Link Frame series. So with all that said, I was able to top a regional top three undefeated after Swiss with a 6-0-2 record. I'm extremely proud of myself, this deck, and everyone who's able to support me. Uh, with all of that uh, being said, let's just dive right into it. All right, everyone, let's get started with one of my favorite openings, the one card starter, Salman Great of Fire. We'll go from draw phase, standby to main phase here, Normal summon Salaman Great of Fire, activate its effect, searching for a copy of Salaman Great Gazelle. From here, you'll link summon Salaman Great Bay Links to your EMZ there and activate its effect as Chain Link 1 and activating Salaman Great Gazelle as Chain Link 2. Uh, we'll resolve that backwards, summoning Gazelle and adding Salaman Great Sanctuary from your deck to your hand. Uh, from there, a new game state opens up, so you can activate Salaman Great Gazelle's effect to send one Salaman Great card from your deck to your feet to the graveyard. Sending Salaman Great Spinny, and stop me if you haven't seen this before. From here, you'll activate the ignition effect of Spinny in the graveyard to summon it onto the field, and then we will overlay into the network into Salaman Great's Mirage Dalio. Activating Mirage Dalio's effect to detach one material to special summon one Jack Jaguar from your deck to the field. From here, you'll link summon into another copy of Salaman Great Bay Links before taking those two monsters and linking into Salaman Great Sunlight Wolf. Here, we'll activate Jack Jaguar's effect, returning Bay Links from your graveyard to your extra deck to summon a Jack Jaguar into a zone a Salaman Great Link monster points to. From there, you won't be activating Sunlight Wolf's effect yet. We'll do that later in the combo. We'll send these two monsters to the graveyard to summon a Link 3. Promethean Princess Bestower of Flames. From there, we'll activate her ignition effect to summon one fire monster from the graveyard. We will choose Salaman Great Sunlight Wolf. From there, we will link those two off into a Link 4. My pride and joy and favorite monster of the deck, Salaman Great Raging Phoenix. From here, we will activate Salaman Great Sanctuary. Then using its effect to use the same named Salaman Great Link monster uh, as its complete material into another copy of Raging Phoenix. We will activate its on summon effect since it was relinked using its own name uh, to search for one Salaman Great card from your deck to your hand and activating Sunlight Wolf's uh, effect to add one fire monster from your graveyard to your hand since a monster was summoned into the zone it was pointing to. So we will resolve that backwards, adding Mirage Dalio back into your extra deck and resolving the search from Raging Phoenix. Here we will add Will of the Salaman Great and activating it onto the field. This has a continuous effect to summon one Salaman Great monster from your hand or graveyard uh, while it's face up on the field once per turn. However, it has a second effect which allows you to send it to the graveyard, target one of your Salaman Great link monsters that was re-summoned uh, using its same name as link material and summon up to that link rating from your graveyard in hand to the field. And since we have Raging Phoenix here, we will target that and summon up to four monsters. We'll summon Spinny, Jack Jaguar, Gazelle, and Salaman Great of Fire. Amazing card. I always search this off Raging Phoenix, depending on the matchup, of course. 
uh, the advantage is quite high. Here we'll leap these two monsters together to summon Sprite Sprint, and we will activate its effect on summon to send one level two monster from our deck to the graveyard. Here we will send EMP Meow Mine, another layer of disruption that we'll explain later, and overlaying Salaman Great Gazelle and Spinny once more to summon Wind Up Zen Mains. And here we have a, an amazing board, but it's not over yet. Let's relink Sunlight Wolf here and Blazing Phoenix into another copy of Sunlight Wolf, protecting the Raging Phoenix by putting it in the graveyard. Uh, here we'll use Sunlight Wolf's extra ignition effect since it was relinked using a monster with its same name. You can add one Salaman Great Spell Trap from your graveyard to your hand, thus adding the will back uh, that you used earlier. Here, you also notice that we have many layers of interruption and uh, resources at our beck and call. We have Sprite Sprint's effect to detach an Xyz material from a monster on your side of the field once a monster is special summoned, uh, and that allows you to target one monster and return it to the hand. We have Wind Up Zen Main's protection effect, which when it would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can detach a material instead. And on the end phase, it allows you to target one card on the field and destroy it if that comes to be. Uh, other resources we have are Salaman Great Raging Phoenix. When a fire monster is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can target one of those monsters, special summon this card, and this card gains that much attack. Uh, we have the EMP Meow Mine, which allows you to when a Link 2 monster is either sent to the graveyard or banished, allows you to banish this card from your hand or graveyard, target one card on your opponent's side of the field and return it to the hand. And since we have two Link 2 monsters here, it is quite hard to play around that fact. Uh, we also have Promethean Princess, Bestower of Flames, able to both either send one uh, link to, to you control to the graveyard to activate EMP Meow Mind's effect, but also summon itself, destroy a card on either side of the field, which could also be wind up Zen Mains, uh, which can force its effect uh, as well. That will pop a card in the end phase. Uh, furthermore, you could also then summon it into the Sunlight Wolf column if you choose not to destroy that. Uh, and then it will add another resource for you to use on the following turn. Uh, if a monster like Sprite Sprint, after you use the Wind Up Send Mains Bounce, uh, you could then also activate Raging Phoenix's effect in the graveyard, which is quite a lot of going ons on your opponent's turn. And you also have the Salaman Great Bay Lynx, uh, allowing you to protect any Salamangre card on the field from destruction once. Between Will and Jack Jaguar, you have quite a lot of materials worth for recovery plays on turn three, if need be. Uh, however, you uh, also have all of the other four cards in your hand for added disruption, extension, or uh, preventive play. And uh, one small mention is Salman Great of Fire's effect, which seems innocuous at first. However, if a Cybers monster you control battles, you can banish this card and destroy the monster that you control, thus avoiding any damage calculation or uh, similar battle effect tricks, uh, which will also um, proc the Salaman Great of Fire in your graveyard if need be. And the other secret effect, Salaman Great Sanctuary here. When a Link monster you control battles, you are able to target one Link monster that you control. Does not have to be the attacking monster. You can pay 1,000 life points, reduce that Link monster's attack to zero, and gain the original attack of that monster as life point gain. Uh, that effect is permanent. 
However, combined with Salamang Rate of Fire, you can avoid taking additional damage uh, if need be. So that's the one card combo uninterrupted. All right, and let's get started with combo number two. If you find yourself without Salamang Rate of Fire and uh, you need to start off with another one card, you can start with here, uh, Salaman Great Gazelle. This card, uh, while not as strong, will allow you to make a very similar end board. Uh, so from here, you go into draw phase, standby, main phase one, normal summon Salaman Great Gazelle, activating its effect to send a copy of Salaman Great Spinny from your deck to your graveyard, activating Spinny's effect since you control a Salaman Great monster uh, to summon itself onto the field. From there, you can overlay into the amazing Salman Great Mirage Stallion. Uh, from here, you activate its effect to detach to special summon one Salman Great monster from your deck to the field, and I will choose Salman Great of Fire. This card will allow you to search for a Salman Great level four or lower monster, and I usually choose Salman Great Mole here because of its added graveyard effect allowing you to recycle five Salaman Great cards to draw two as long as you control no monsters on the field. Uh, and uh, between this and Foul, both have similar effects that special summon themselves onto your field as an extension, but I find that the, this, this one's quite good. Uh, so from here, you link summon this off for a copy of Salaman Great Balinx, activating its effect to add a copy of Salaman Great Sanctuary from your deck to your hand. Uh, from here, to ensure you have a copy of Mirage Dalio for next turn, you can link summon into a copy of Sunlight Wolf here. And since you have performed a link summon this turn, that allows you to activate Mole's effect to special summon itself to a zone you, a link monster you control is pointing to. Uh, which will activate Sunlight Wolf's effect, allowing you to recycle Mirage Stalio back to your extra deck. From here, you can link these two off and summon Promethean Princess, Bastora Flames, activating its effect to summon any fire to relink that off into a copy of Salaman Great Raging Phoenix. From here, you are able to activate Salaman Great Sanctuary, Reincarnation link your Raging Phoenix into another copy of Raging Phoenix, uh, activating its on summon effect to search for Will of the Salaman Great, activating that again to then activate its second effect to send it to the graveyard, target your Raging Phoenix, and summon up to four monsters from your graveyard or hand. I will summon a Salaman Great of Fire, Salaman Great Spinny. Salaman Great Gazelle, and Salaman Great Mole. Notice that you do have to have at least four non-link materials worth of monsters uh, to summon into defense position. Uh, and uh, you do have to mine the graveyard in some cases, uh, or you won't be able to summon as many monsters as you otherwise would like to. From here, you can send those monsters away to summon Sprite Sprint, activate its effect to send a level two or lower monster, or sorry, not lower. Send one level two exactly monster from your deck to the graveyard. And my choice is always EMP Meow Mine, uh, or if I had already drawn it, another copy of Salaman Great of Fire. And then we get to overlay here for wind up send mains thus creating a very similar end board to our first example earlier. Uh, you still have the Sprite Sprint effect, the Zen Mains protection, the EMP Meow Mine, the Princess and Graveyard Balinx, and a copy of Raging Phoenix in the Graveyard, uh, as well as all of the residual ones like Balinx Sanctuary and Salaman Great of Fire. However, you also have an added benefit of having a pot of avarice if your opponent's able to break through your board. So in the recovery play of having Sunlight Wolf relink into Sunlight Wolf and getting back Will of the Salaman Great, um, there is a trade-off uh, depending on which line you go through. So there are a lot of options and uh, quite a few mode changes, as it were. 
uh, to get into a position where you have so much advantage your opponent uh, is unable to play through. Keep in mind also that you'd have four additional cards in your hand uh, to either extend your play or prevent your opponent from either playing or disrupting your strategy. All right, and now we've had some examples of combos that have amazing starts, uh, access to almost all of your decks full of resources. However, that is not always the case, especially in deck building when you're playing with hand traps or extension that um, seems odd or not applicable in most situations. So let's do a play test hand and see how that goes. Uh, we have Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, Salaman Great Spinny, Nibiru the Primal Being, Salaman Great Charge, and oh, Salaman Great Sanctuary. Definitely not the fifth card that we ever want to see in our opening hand. Most of this hand you seem as like irredeemable, you won't be able to play through, let alone even get to Raging Phoenix. However, that is where you're wrong. Where there is a Salaman Great Will, there is a way. So let's start with uh, making our draw phase, standby phase to main phase here. We will normal summon Ash Blossom, enjoy spring, and enjoy the look on our opponent's faces uh, with such an unconventional start. We'll link that off into Salaman Great Almirage. Uh, from here, since we control a Salaman Great Monster, we can discard Salaman Great Spinny, activating its effect to increase its attack. We can then, since we control a Salaman Great Monster, resummon that Spinny from the graveyard here, uh, allowing us to banish it to link summon a copy of Salaman Great Baylinx. Uh, here's where I would say activate effect. However, it seems like we're an amazing Salaman Great player and always draw our field spell when we need it. So uh, we will continue our play here. Link summoning a copy of Salaman Great Sunlight Wolf. Uh, if you've been following along and understand Salaman Great Charger's effect, we do have just enough uh, plus one monsters that we can activate its first effect. Uh, activating Salaman Great Charge allows you to target three fire monsters in your banishment or graveyard. Uh, summon one and return the other two to the extra deck. And since these two are extra deck monsters here, I will choose to summon the Spinny in the Salaman Great Wolf column here. Uh, that allows us to activate its effect and coincidentally add the Ash Blossom back to our hand. From here, we will link summon into a copy of Baylinx again for future protection plays. We will link those off here for a copy of Princess Bestower of Flames at, using its effect to summon any fire monster and finally going into the copy of Raging Phoenix. Then we can activate the Salaman Great Sanctuary that we drew as our fifth card and show our opponent just how broken this is by using four links worth of material to summon a Raging Phoenix and activate its effect. Uh, now, before I resolve that, I'll point out that we do not have a graveyard full of Salaman Great monsters. So probably the most optimal way of adding a Salaman Great card to use is probably Roar in this situation. I'm going to quick shuffle, <clears throat> set the Roar, and you have a quite a decent field, if I do say so for myself, uh, despite whatever we drew uh, for turn. Uh, we still have the Raging Phoenix in the graveyard, Promethean Princess, Bastora Flames, uh, one copy of Spinny, and one Baylinx for protection, as well as a Roar and assorted hand traps. So yeah, just goes to show, no matter how bad a hand looks, uh, whether it's any theme, uh, always try to play it out. Learn more uh, from your hands that aren't optimal than the ones that you've been practicing on YouTube for hours straight. OK, and here we are again in a situation I'm all too familiar with on my fourth summon, and I'm fearing the shadow of the rock. So here I will use my three monsters 
to link summon into Promethean Princess. Now that I've conducted my fifth summon, I am susceptible to Nibiru. Uh, as I showed with my video that I collaborated with mst.tv with, uh, link in the description or on screen at this moment. However, some commenters still were in disbelief, so I will show what happens in each different stage of the combo up until the end phase, just so that anyone who otherwise had questions could have clarification here. So, as such, one of the commenters mentioned, what if your opponent activates Nibiru on the response or resolution of Promethean Princess's effect to summon a fire monster. And I will show you here. So Promethean Princess will activate here, summoning a fire monster from the graveyard, at which case my opponent will activate their copy of Nibiru, the primal being, tributing my monsters, sending them to the graveyard to special summon a copy of Nibiru on their side of the field and one token onto mine. From here, it's a hop, skip, and a jump to an amazing board. We will summon the Salamangri Weasel here, sending it to the graveyard to link summon into another copy of Valynx thus activating Weasel's trigger condition to return it to the bottom of the deck to draw one by special summoning Salaman Great Monster to my opponent's side of the field. And draw one. From there, uh, a new game state has arrived and Princess, having seen a monster special summon on my opponent's side of the field, uh, will be able to trigger here, so I will do so. I will activate Promethean Princess's effect to target both my fire monster and one of the monsters they control, and I will choose Gazelle. So we will resolve that. Summoning Princess, destroying Gazelle, and um, using Baylinx's effect to protect my existing Baylinx. I now have four links worth of material. I'll link those off into a copy of Salaman Great Raging Phoenix. Uh, and then furthermore, using that as its complete materials to relink a Salaman Great Raging Phoenix on top of that. Uh, using its on summon effect, that allows me to search for a Salaman Great card from my deck. I will add Will of the Salaman Great. I will activate the Will of the Salaman Great, sending it for its second effect, targeting Raging Phoenix. Summoning my summonable monsters, Fire and Gazelle. I will then link using these monsters here to summon my copy of Sprite Sprint using its effect to send EMP Meow Mine uh, to the graveyard. And then using the Nibiru token and Raging Phoenix to summon a copy of Hida, the Fire Charmer of Blaze. Now, it may not be as impressive as the full board otherwise. However, it still has you set up with both the MP Meow Mind Sprint interaction, as well as having a monster on the side of the field for recovery plays if they were to destroy your Hida. Also, you have the Baylinx in the graveyard, the princess that has two fire monsters to target, and of course the Raging Phoenix if either one of them were to be destroyed. So uh, all in all, it's not a bad option. You do get the one draw from the Weasel as well as the other four cards in your hand. So you still have quite a few resources despite being Nibiru at such an awkward stage. And then we'll fast forward to the next one. All right, here we are in the next step uh, where my opponent has decided to hold their Nibiru for any possible resource loss on my behalf. So don't blame them. They're trying to get the best out of the cards they use. So in this instance, I have summoned Raging Phoenix using itself as a name and adding Will of the Salaman Great. I will now activate Will of the Salaman Great, targeting my Raging Phoenix, summoning my two summonable monsters. It is at this time my opponent decides they've seen enough, 
Seeing that I have wasted a card or a resource, they decide to activate their copy of Nibiru the Primal Being in their hand at this juncture. So all my monsters get sent and tributed to the field. Nibiru summons itself. And so with that, the token comes. Uh, from this point on, you use the same song and dance. Special summon the Salamang Great Weasel. Link that off for Bay Links. Activate Weasel. Targeting Gazelle. Summon it to their side of the field. Return the Weasel to the bottom of the deck to draw one. Now on the new chain link, you can activate Princess. Targeting Bay Links and Gazelle. Or Nibiru, whichever you prefer. Uh, allowing those monsters to get destroyed and sent to the graveyard. From here on a new chain, you have Salamon Great Raging Phoenix's effect, targeting the Balinx that was just destroyed that you controlled, summoning itself with 500 more attack. You can then use the Nibiru token and the Princess to set that up for the future turn and summon a copy of Hida the Fire Charmer Blade. This not only gives you an additional fire monster to activate Princess with, but if your opponent decides to try to remove it by destruction, you also have more follow-up for the next turn. You get a free draw off of Weasel and the other four cards in your hand for added disruption and extension from here. Um, so all in all, not a bad place. And we will now get to the final stage. All right, and here we are in the situation where your opponent's much too good to fall for any early Nibirus. Um, they know for a fact that all you have to do is wait for the end of the main phase to Nibiru and your opponent is cooked. Well, in this case, despite setting up all of this and all of the great support, your opponent decides now's the time to Nibiru. So, Activating the Nibiru from their hand when you declare end of main. All of your monsters get tributed and sent to the graveyard. Summoning their copy of Nibiru and a token onto your side of the field. From here, you can, on response to that, since a Link 2 monster you control was sent to the graveyard, you can use that copy of EMP Meow Mine to target your opponent's Nibiru the Primal Being, adding that to their hand. Then you're able to special summon the Weasel, send that to the graveyard, summon the Balinx, activate the Weasel here, targeting Gazelle. Summon it to your side of the field, returning the Weasel, drawing one card, activating the Princess, targeting the Balinx and the Gazelle to summon it, destroying those cards. Activating the Raging Phoenix to summon itself, targeting the Balinx you control, gaining 500. Then finally sending these two monsters to the grave, using them as link material to summon Hida. Now, you didn't have to use EMP Meow Mind here. Uh, I just wanted to showcase that for the sake of the combo. You could have held on to it, kept the Nibiru on their side of the field, or destroyed it with Princess. So if they tried to banish it or otherwise uh, remove it from the field, you're able to use EMP Meow Mind there. But as you can see, you still get the free draw, still have Will in your hand, and the other four cards. So. In this situation, your opponent is down one card, but you are up one. So I'd say that there is light at the end of the tunnel. We don't have to be overshadowed by the rock anymore. We're finally ready to step out from the Stone Age and into the Age of Fire. I'm glad that anyone who had doubts could come in and take a look at this uh, and feel more confidence knowing that this deck can now play through the modern age. And uh, not only to a decent degree, but quite well instead. So yes, thank you for looking at this. So in this segment of how my discussion is with Salomon Great Theory and concepts are, this deck has such an amazing array of possible extenders and cards that can push through opponents' boards and flexibility in deck building where you can prioritize 
fluidity uh, other than locks or fairly aggressive pushes. Cards that would help you uh, in this regard are definitely things like Cross Out Designator for counterplay against your opponent's hand-based strategies, uh, Silent Man Greed Weasel to allow you to not only continue summoning after Nibiru, but also pushing through and extending your plays with Promethean Princess on your going first turn uh, not only using it as a preventative or destructive effect on your opponent's turn. And later I'll show you a combo showcasing said card. Uh, and then we have Triple Tactics Talent, which I do play one of as in the main, just to be able to go second and have this card uh, always alleviates my anxiety. Being able to bait out my opponent's monster effects in the main phase, whether it's using starters or extenders, uh, being able to take your opponent's monsters, draw two, or look at your opponent's hand and discard the Nibiru out of your hand so that you can push through your plays is understated at best. For me, uh, having this card at one in my main and two in the side, uh, having it drawn as the sixth card on my going second hand went from a, a losing position to a winning one. So I cannot uh, state enough that this card is quite necessary for this deck. Uh, as far as the additional extenders that I feel have niche situations, but overall are solid uh, in their application are Solomon Great Foul. In situations where you need your Solomon Great Gazelle sent to the deck from the to the graveyard or Salmon Great of Fire's deck searching effect, this can be activated as chain link two to chain block certain negation cards or cards that need to respond directly to said card. So I do feel like Foul does have a place uh, as well as having an 1800 attack stat allows you to normal summon and beat over SP Little Knight if need be or uh, other stun like cards. Uh, EMP Meow Mine being overall probably the best new extender that uh, is featured in the deck. It allows you to summon not only if you control a link monster or have one in your graveyard, but also your opponents. So it's a free summon effectively most of the time, depending on the matchup. It allows you to push through different board states by threatening its secondary effect, which allows you to banish it from the hand or graveyard after a Link 2 monster is sent or banished. Uh, you can proactively activate this as you're Link Climbing uh, to pick and, and break apart opponent's boards. So it's quite valuable, especially if you summon SP Little Knight. Uh, it results in quite a lot of disruption, uh, both from the two banish effects of SP Little Knight and also the uh, the bounce effect from here. And uh, one of my favorite new additions, shout outs to my friend Vincent, um, local Salaman Great player, pointed this out to me that this is the best Salaman Great <laughs> extender off of Hida if you summon your opponent's Snake Eyes Ash because it is a level one fire. It is able to search it from the deck. So, uh, for that alone, I felt it was too good to pass up, knowing that most of my matchups would be Snake Eyes related. Um, and I was having issues with recovery after having used so many of my resources. The Pot of Avarice effect is not only for monsters, it is also for spell and trap cards. So if my opponent has gone through quite a lot of my resources and I find myself without a monster on the board, I'm able to just send five of them back and draw two and that's one of the best effects uh, that the game has seen uh, since i've started playing so that's my justification for including these cards in my main deck uh, i'm a big fan of all of these cards and uh, i've never once felt that they were unneeded in my hand and contribute to better boards better pushes and overall more consistent gameplay all right, and for this segment, I offer you to explore possible new things or revisit old options uh, for the deck theme. 
and uh, maybe in, spark a little bit of discussion between each of the uh, cards that I mentioned here. Uh, I know that there are a lot of people who are investigating into fire recovery as a possible option, whether it's by enabling your extenders by discarding it from your hand to special summon fire monsters from your graveyard, and of course its recycling effect is very powerful. It's definitely something that I was considering in deck building, uh, but ultimately decided not to for the sake of consistency and to allow for as many hand traps as I could. Uh, another card I also considered was Monster Reborn, which is a particularly uh, a very impressive card that allows early princess use and cutting off your opponent's usage on your turn uh, by simply summoning it, using its effect after you've put another fire in the graveyard, and linking into Raging Phoenix that way and turning that on. It's quite impressive as a quick shortcut. However, I wasn't uh, under the assumption that all seven rounds, or eight rounds rather, that would be fire uh, related. So I opted to go for consistency, and uh, I also fear the shifter. So <laughs> I, I didn't feel like I could get away with Reborn this time, but perhaps next time. Uh, another card that always tickles my intrigue is Salaman Great Violent Chimera, which has a, a myriad of powerful effects uh, that enable OT Kang um, in aggressive pushes through opponents' monsters and uh, combo quite well with these other two cards, uh, which is Pit Knight Early and Proxy F Magician. Uh, using these in car tandem with each other ensures a one-card OTK, assuming your opponent has a monster on board. Uh, I've never done such in a tournament before, and I don't know all the intricacies about it. However, I'm always keeping my eye on viable strategies uh, for the deck. And um, yeah, it's just worth bringing up again, uh, especially if people can't uh, get their hands on SP Little Knight or, or Superstar Slayer Typhons. Um, it's always good to have surprise ace in the hole situations to disrupt your opponent's established board. And uh, these cards are definitely worth mentioning. Uh, furthermore, we have World Dragon Zelantis. Uh, Zelantis is an amazing card, uh, both in this deck and also for the sake of fire decks in general. Uh, there's interactive uh, sort of synergies with this that not a lot of people know about, such as uh, after summoning World Sea Dragon Zelantis, you're able to normal or special summon Salaman Great of Fire, uh, which will in turn fire lock you, uh, allowing you to activate World Dragon here to banish all monsters on the field and return only fire ones. Um, you may cut yourself off of your own Zelantis. However, if your opponent was on an alternative strategy besides fire, uh, they'll find all their monsters are now banished. So I thought about using this, uh, but I did not feel that it was better than summoning the third Raging Phoenix and just adding uh, something that I could use uh, as useful as Salaman Great charge or will the Salaman great so i decided to leave it on the wayside this time but you never know uh given the format this powerful card like this if it survives the ban list it should definitely be looked at uh we also have lingaribo if you find yourself upping the amount of emp meow mine that you have or if you find your Salaman Great of Fire has either been negated or your Mirage Talio in tandem as well, uh, that this powerful card can prevent a lot of stun or uh, control-like elements. Um, just throwing it on the board can really disrupt your opponent's strategy. So if I had more extra deck slots, I'd definitely consider this as an option. Uh, we also have everyone's favorite Link 4 Fire Monster, Amphibious Swarm Ship and Blue Whale. Uh, there's a good number of synergies here with Princess and your own Raging Phoenix. Same as Snake Eyes variants, but I found that uh, having it just sitting on the board uh, wasn't as threatening as the board that I could create with my deck. Uh, despite being able to go into it. And the link uh, the link material that is required to go into it is quite steep. 
uh, in most game states. Uh, a card for the future, or a card if you're quite fond of Ash Blossom and Joy's Spring. Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Horse Prince allows you to summon any level 3 fire monster from your deck to effectively tutor it out and allow you to recover it with Salaman Great Sunlight Wolf. Uh, this basically can can turn things around for you if you're playing against decks that are susceptible to Ash Blossom, particularly. So it's always worth taking a look at, especially with future support uh, coming out for the deck, which will allow you to grab that as well, uh, which otherwise would be quite hard since it is not named Salaman Great Monster and uh, it's hard accessing it otherwise. Uh, another monster to consider is Nightmare Phoenix. Nightmare Phoenix being a link to fire monster that could potentially draw you cards depending on the co-links that you have on the field at the moment. Uh, is also a great alternative to SP if you need to remove floodgates uh, without inhibiting your ability and if you end up in a situation where there can only be one on the field this could be your answer to summon uh, into another thing using hand trap so uh, always worth taking a look at and its battle protection is not something that could be overlooked either uh, and then finally we've got salaman great here pyro phoenix uh, in tandem with the future support that we get using horse prints to get um, the code of soul, I, I believe that's what it's called. Uh, comments can correct me if otherwise, but uh, Pyro Phoenix has an amazing effect uh, if it is reincarnation linked that will effectively destroy every up card your opponent controls, uh, as well as having a very potent burn effect um, attached to it. So I'm looking for my, my second copy, that's for sure. <laughs> but I do feel like this card is worth exploring once the new support comes out, and uh, especially if the, the format begins to slow a bit and you, you'll find more continuous or lingering cards on the field to get a lot of value off of this. And the special mention is the OG, the amazing anime special, the Salaman Great Heat Leo. Um, I myself have not used this in a tournament yet uh, since I'm tight for space, but I do find that its effect of returning a card from your opponent's spell trap zone back to the deck is always hard to, to justify not playing, especially in the case of Floodgates or having uh, opponent's cards like Snake Eyes placed monsters in their EMZ zone. Or I mean, sorry, not their EMZ zone, their spell trap zone, and sending those right back into the deck instead of sending them to the graveyard or otherwise somewhere where they're accessible is very attractive to me. Uh, and being a salad name on top of that enables you to use it for linking or using it as material for further summons. So. Of all of these future cards, uh, I'm definitely going to be considering them for future formats uh, and seeing how they develop. And uh, yeah, I invite everybody to discuss these and see how far we can get uh, in any particular way. So yeah, I just wanted to showcase these cards here today. Thank you. All right. And in concluding thoughts, I just wanted to thank everybody for taking a look at what I've been working on for the last few months. This format's been amazing, very fun. I'll always remember the Age of Fire as uh, one of the more pleasurable combo deck building and execution of play achievements that Yu-Gi-Oh has ever acclaimed to, to reach in terms of a card game. I uh, want to give uh, further shout outs to the CWG dueling team in the Vancouver Metro community. They are amazing. They have played against me. We have done amazing things, uh, both theory crafting this deck and also alternative decks uh, that performed uh, with varying degrees in the format. So really grateful to them. Big, big shout outs to the Edison community also uh, for being the entry gate back into the game. 
uh, relearning how to play this game has been one of the most pleasurable things I've done in my years of age as of recently. And uh, furthermore, I'm looking forward to more alternative types of play, whether it's Speed Duel, uh, Hat Format, or even Tengu Plant. Uh, but I won't rule out the possibility of going all the way back to Toss Format. Uh, and and revisiting Salamangre right there, I'm sure I can find something uh, that can turn some heads. So thank you everybody for tuning in. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to Hakuna Madeira, and enjoy the intake of Yu-Gi-Oh! content that a community like ours deserves. I'll see you next time, probably with another fun anime deck. Take care, and... Enjoy.